Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype traits, and GD match results of two proto-Luvian individuals, not Luvian, but proto-Luvian individuals, these individuals predate the Luvian culture in Anatolia. Let's start with the first sample who is a woman, she is predicted to have brown color eyes, snub shaped nose and black hair with my Noshakot tool. Uh, with Snipper Free, she's predicted to have brown color eyes, black hair and white skin, which is why I depicted her with white skin, contrary to what you see uh, YSEC depicted her, uh, because I trust Snipper Free much more when it comes to skin prediction than YSEC. She uh, most likely has BH1 blue, I have type 1, but no BH2 and no BH3, right? So definitely dark color eyes. Um, she's got some variations that code for lighter features, less likelihood of heterochromia in SLC 24A4. Uh, and based on her genotypes in ASIP SLC 45A2, she most likely had intermediate color skin. She has got this super exotic genotype that basically increases her risk of hemochromatosis. Um, it says likely unaffected at, unless also age 63D carrier, and she is an age 63D carrier, so she definitely has hemochromatosis. Uh, which is called the Celtic curse. It's most typical in Celts and Irish people. Um, with DRD2, she has got. She does not have the European no-go learner mutation in Pro 19 Pro, so she's got a higher odds of schizophrenia and more D2 dopamine receptors. She has got a 1A2 genotype in TAC1 variation in DRD2, uh, which is kind of atypical for a modern person. It's more typical for like various Neanderthals and monkeys. She was heterozygous for Comte's Valmet variation, so uh, intermediate levels of dopamine, intermediate between warrior and warrior genotype. Um, she's got. She's also heterozygous for OXTR, so I can't quite say that she's a sociopath, but she does have the sociopath allele here. Uh, in EDAR, she does not have any derived variants, so no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds, no East Asian traits. Uh, and she did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is a European... There's other lactose persistence mutations, like I'm sure there's a lactose persistence mutation for Middle Eastern people that she might have had, but she just does not have the European one. Now let's move on to her polygenic traits. She's got a pretty high risk score for Crohn's disease. Uh, she's got a pretty high risk score for type 2 diabetes. Um, she's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder. She's got a high risk score for brain aneurysm. She's got a below average risk score for Parkinson's disease. She's got a below average risk score for schizophrenia. She's got a below average risk score for type 1 diabetes. She's got a low risk score for coronary heart disease. And she's got a very high risk score for asthma. Now, judging on these results with G25, she is scoring 44% Greek Trabzon, and although it's Anatolian Greek, it's still got some Indo-European Yamne ancestry. It's probably like 5 or 10% Yamne, which is very low by world standards. However, by Anatolian standards, it's definitely high by Bronze Age Anatolian standards. That's a lot of Yamne or uh, Northern European like ad admixture. Uh, with Eurogenes K13, she's closest to Cyprians, Kip Cypriots, and she's getting modeled as a mixture of Kurdish, Jewish, plus Sardinian, or Assyrian, plus Sardinian. So, you don't really see much, you don't really see much Indo-European here, but there is some Indo-European ancestry indeed. This is what she's scoring with Panzian LK12, and here she's scoring 5.3% European hunter-gatherer, 29% uh, CHG, which is also interesting that she's got so much CHG or Iranian Neolithic related admixture, but she does have 5% European hunter-gatherer, and the only uh, people that she could have got this admixture from are Indo-Europeans. That's the only... That's the only way she could have got this European Hunter Gather admixture in Anatolia. Uh, this is what she scores with MZLP K16. She is scoring, once again, 8.9% steps. So she's got some Indo European admixture here. She is go scoring 27% Neolithic. So, And with the Oracle, she's actually closest to Greeks, which are Indo European people, which is very interesting. But the distance here is pretty high, so I don't know how reliable this result is. Uh, she is closest to Greeks with the Oracle, which is, you know, quite uh, fascinating stuff. She's getting modeled as a mixture of Cypriot plus Sardinian, and Cypriots are Indo-Europeans, so although they aren't, they don't have much Indo-European ancestry, they are still Indo-Europeans. This is what she's scoring with Ancient Eurasia K6, 20% West European hunter gatherer but that's obviously not the case. She does not have 20% uh, VHG admixture, that would be way too much. She is closest to Jews, various Jews and Cypriots, and by the way, Jews, Tunisians, Moroccan Jews, Libyan Jews, 
all Jews worldwide, from my understanding, are pretty much the same thing. Well, well maybe not all Jews. Maybe not all Jews are the same, because these um, Yemenite Jews and um, Ethiopian Jews are very different in appearance from, like, Ashkenazim, right? By the way, this kid on the right, he looks a lot like Kodak Black. Like, am I the only one that sees this connection between him and Kodak Black? Now let's move on to the second sample, which is a man, he's got YDNA J1, which is obviously not an Indo-European lineage. Uh, it's a West Asian lineage, very Arab lineage. Uh, he's predicted to have brown color eyes, snub-shaped nose, and brown hair instead of black hair. Surprising, but um, Snipper Freak is predicted to have brown color eyes, black hair, and white skin. That's kind of how I depicted him here. Um, he was uh, heterozygous for BH1, and I actually don't know if he had BH2 or not, because he's got two draft variants and one two draft variants and one BH2 variation, and he's got zero draft variants in another. How does that work? Some kind of this linkage event occurred uh, in order for him to get this kind of a result. So, or or there is a genotyping error. Those are the two factors that contribute to this kind of a result. He does not have the European no-go learner mutation, so higher odds of schizophrenia. Uh, more dopamine D2 receptors. It's not even bad. It's not even bad to not have it. Uh, he's got A2A2 genotype in TAC1. Once again, a very normal, uh, very good genotype for somebody to have. I think it's good because you want more dopamine D2 receptors. Um, and this um, this genotype actually comes with some advantages, such as lower ADHD risk, lower risk of Parkinson's, lower risk of various illnesses. Very typical genotype for a human. He's got a warrior gene in um, COMT, which comes with some advantages. The advantage is better stress resiliency, the disadvantages is lower attention span, and stuff like that. And um, he does not have the sociopath gene. No sociopath gene, no derived OXTR. Um, definitely very empathetic and optimistic. He did not have derived EZAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no East Asian uh, shovel-shaped incisors and epicanthic folds does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. As I've said previously, it's a European mutation. He's not a European, so he doesn't have it. And he does have the mutation that protects against myopia, which is really cash money. He doesn't need glasses to see in the distance. Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got an above average risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, he's got an above average risk score for Parkinson's disease. He's got a average risk score for type 1 diabetes. He's got a below average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a average risk score for brain aneurysm. He's got a very high risk score for stroke. Uh, he's got an average risk score for bipolar disorder. He's got a very high risk score for asthma. And he's got a pretty low risk score for coronary heart disease. This is what he's scoring with um, Eurogene's K13. Notice how he's scoring 25% West Mediterranean. If this was a more Eastern Anatolian sample, he would not score like this. He would not get 25% West Mediterranean. This is a very Mediterranean rather than a West Asian person is what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, he's closest to Cypriots and he's getting modeled as a mixture of Cypriot plus various European groups. This is what he's getting with uh, G25. He is closest to various Greeks, Greek uh, Islanders, I think, and Anatolian Greeks and Cypriots too. So... Um, once again, this is a Mediterranean result rather than a West Asian result. Like, it's not Iranian. There is not much Iranian Neolithic. There is not much Caucasus here. This is what he scores with MZLPK16. He is scoring 7.6% step, which is less than the previous sample. Uh, but he is actually scoring some Northeast European too, which kind of compensates for that, right? Uh, here he is closest to Cypriots and Greeks. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Armenian or East Turkish plus Sardinian. So relative to the uh, Eastern Anatolians, here is more shifted towards the West Mediterranean, uh, West European, West Mediterranean, Sardinians. With Pond DNA LK12, this is what he scores. He is scoring 6% Caucasus, I mean, 6% uh, European hunter gatherer here, a lot of European hunter gatherer. Uh, once again, the only place you could get this European hunter gatherer admixture is from uh, Indo Europeans, but with the Oracle, the Oracle doesn't really see that. The, according to the Oracle, He's not in the European at all. According to the Oracle, he's very Mediterranean. So uh, you really can't ignore it. You know, these Anatolian Bronze Age people definitely have in the European admixture. Maybe not as much as, uh, like, even even Southwest Europeans, like Spanish people got way more in the European admixture. But these people, they got in the European admixture still. And, for example, line number 13 here with the ancient Eurasia K6 result, he's getting modeled as a mixture of one quarter step middle late Bronze Age, one quarter in the European. That's a lot of in the European admixture. Granted, it is relative to Levant. Um, 
relative to you know that doesn't say much but still he's got some indo-european admixture it's not an entirely not an entirely west asian not an entirely middle eastern person thanks for watching my video about these two early bronze age anatolians you can download the raw data files for both of them in 23andme format from link which is in the description leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video goodbye